Of that which needs to be done, how much would this uh, responsible surveillance that is overseen, reviewed, and effective act, or less painfully, restore act, how much fixing would this bill actually accomplish? Well, the main untold story is that the president continues to claim he has inherent constitutional power to flout any law that Congress enacts, even one that he proposes. And that means he's claiming the power not only to intercept our emails and conversations, but to break and enter homes, open mail, uh, even commit torture in the name of gathering foreign intelligence. And this is a claim that Congress has declined to repudiate, not only in the old statute, but in the new statute that's proposed. So it really does nothing with regard to trying to restrain the president's unfettered exercise of authority to gather foreign intelligence. Moreover, it doesn't seek to confine the new statute to gathering intelligence related to fighting international terrorism, which was its initial justification. Foreign intelligence under the law includes everything from discovering what the negotiating position of the French are in having movies enter the French domestic market to rainforests in Brazil to uh, the incidents of AIDS in South Africa. And this bill has not confined the new powers to gathering intelligence against international terrorism. Lastly, the, the bill represents an entire capitulation to the administration's claim that no longer does the Fourth Amendment requirement that you have an individualized suspicion that an American is engaged in some kind of terrorism or acting as a foreign agent before a warrant is issued in order to obtain foreign intelligence, that there's sort of a blanket uh, warrant, exactly the kind of warrants that King George III used mm -hmm. against American colonists and provoked the, uh, the declaration of independence. Which brings this interesting quote out of a New York Times story about this from a Justice Department spokesman, uh, that his agency would review any bills that are introduced, quote, to make sure they don't have any consequences that hamper our abilities to protect the country. Maybe he didn't mean to say any consequences, but was not, as you suggest here, the country founded on the notion that some things should, in fact, hamper the government's abilities, even when the government is claiming its only motive is to protect us? That is the entire meaning of the Constitution and the Fourth Amendment, to check what government can do. And that statement from the Justice Department really echoes a former statement by the Director of National Intelligence to the effect that if he had to choose between so-called saving the country and saving the Constitution, he'd save the country, sort of implicitly suggesting there's a conflict between the Constitution and the country, and the Constitution has to bow, instead of understanding that the Constitution is the country. The Constitution is our birth certificate, the Constitution which gives us our freedom, our checks and balances that make certain that we survive and flourish as a nation, yet retain our liberties rather than giving them up in the quest to defeat any kind of uh, terrorism that's alleged by the president. And one other thing that you pointed out, I think, is that the administration continues to claim s absolute secrecy over all these threats that allegedly require the statute. And Congress now for over six years has permitted the president simply to state as a fact any description he has of the danger. It's not Ronald Reagan's trust but verify. It's just, if you say it, Mr. President, we'll believe it. And Congress has certainly strong authority to obtain that information if it would simply stop being invertebrate and stand up and discharge its constitutional responsibilities of oversight. Yeah.